Listen, I told you guys, I was like, look, hey, get over to the Reddit because we're going to react to the Reddit. And in fact, Boogie's now here. What's up, Boogie? What's up, man? How you doing, Kane? So I said we'd respond to the Reddit and you guys flamed the ever living f out of Boogie on the Reddit. Boogie, do you know how much you got on the goddamn Reddit? I mean, it's Reddit. Reddit's had a, a for me since 2018. What would you expect? They're the people that believed I bought a Tesla. Those are the people that like think I my ex-wife. I, I don't know. Like, of course they me. They went really, really hard on you. First thing I'm seeing is a post. Uh, what is Boogie looking at on his other monitor during the podcast? Oh, I'm generally watching my living room. My girlfriend is generally in the living room in there. I recently was told I'm most likely di uh, autistic, basically diagnosed autistic. And I've never been a huge fan of, of eye contact. So a lot of times when I'm filming, I don't even like to look at myself on a camera. I look off to the side. I just kind of like stare. But recently, I just like to watch my girlfriend. Boogie, what is up with everyone saying like, oh, I got ADHD, I, I'm this, I'm that, I'm autistic. I, like, do you think people care? Because like I, when I, like, I, I guess maybe 10 years ago, I was like, oh, that's interesting. This person has this thing. But now when people say they have something, I'm just like, I don't care. Off. Why are you telling everyone? I think it's probably overdiagnosed and I know I talk about it too much. I think people should talk about it less. The world doesn't need to know every diagnosis you have. It doesn't need to know every thing about you so i think people are i think number one is over diagnosed so these pharmacies can prescribe more to you and i also think uh i think we discuss it a little bit too much yeah you know? but boogie you're you're old enough to remember there were categories back in the day of like cool normal and a card that was it you yeah, wouldn't my, be like i'm autistic they'd be like that guy's a Hard. I don't know. There's so much identity politics now. Everybody wants to fit in their like little box in their little slot and they want to be part of their little club. I'm liberal. I'm conservative. I'm this. I'm that. I got ADHD. I'm autistic. I got whatever. Nobody really gives a shit. But everyone that's, I, I don't know, the internet, social media, just everybody wants to file themselves into little groups and be parts of little groups and little groups. I don't want to be part of a little group. I want to be a part of a big group. I just want to be people doing shit. That's, I don't know. I'm yeah. just so sick of hearing about like Gabby Hanna, bless her heart. But every, every time you talk, I'm, 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 this, I'm, this, I'm, I don't care. There's one that I desperately want to get in here. Could you please have the cows react to Boogie's old porn blog where he calls a high schooler attending prom asleep because her big hair is visible? I, I think if you are a 16 year old girl and you go to prom with your vagina out, you're probably a. Am I wrong about that? <laughs> but Put your vagina away what put is this? your vagina away what are they talking don't go about? to prom with your vagina what? i had a blog and i was it was obviously like the shock jock days early days of the internet where everybody did everything like um okay well, let me give you the long version of it okay the internet was brand new i learned how to do web design i wanted to do web design for local businesses there wasn't a lot of money in it but there was a lot of money in designing websites for pornographers so that's where i went and that's the direction i went into and then blogs became a thing in the late 90s, early 2000s. So I created a bunch of blogs. Some were written by me, some were, were not written by me. Some were like copy pasted, some, I would just be honest with you, I stole content from other creators and like re-edited and reworded and stuff. Some of it was like re pre-written by the places that you're advertising. They would just copy and paste it and drop it in your blog. And I would say the most outlandish, stupid shit, the same way I do on Twitter now. And when all of this stuff was going around, we would all talk about the same thing. We would all make the same jokes. We'd, and it was all offensive, stupid humor. Uh, you know, it was a good time. I, I, I still like that. So, since you, so, I can't do it now, but I like it. So I love let it. me, let me get this straight buggy. All right. You went and, um, you know, did all this horrible stuff, said all this horrible stuff online. Yeah. And then, sure. uh, had a decade of playing Mr. Rogers on YouTube. So the Mr. Rogers character is kind of close. There's like, there's three boogies. Okay. In my mind, first there's the Francis kind of boogie, which is the person I like to pretend to be, the person I, I kind of was growing up, breaking controllers, smashing my, I would punch holes in walls like Andy Bernard from The Office, like I was a complete piece of shit. Then there's the person that I want to be. I want to be Mr. Rogers. That's the person I've tried to be my whole life. I don't want to be Francis. I want to be Mr. Rogers. I want to be the Mr. Rogers boogie. Then there's a third boogie, which is kind of me, which is a mix between the two, but he's also really boring. Like my friend McJuggernuggets, like my friend behind, Ken behind a camera, if you take away the fake drama for their YouTube channels, you take away Psycho Kid, if you take away the fake ink or grandpa, they're just boring people. I'm just pretty much a boring person. So I, I don't know, after doing all the blogs and everything else, I just wanted to try to be better and, and do better. But I cannot get away from the Francis part of me, dude. I like being an 
asshole. I, I do. It's fun. Mm -hmm. I like to pretend to be an asshole. I like to make offensive jokes. I, I love Andy Kaufman. I love Sam Kennison. I love Richard Pryor. I love George Carlin. I love these asshole. Do you, know how, do, you know how funny offensive, funny do you know how offensive it is when you tell people that you're doing Andy Kaufman and you're being Andy Kaufman? People get mad. Cause I know it's that. Like, and, and no, I, and Andy I love Kaufman it because that was a legend. Was Boogie. talented. He was talented. Hey, Boogie, what's with this video of you in your 30s talking about being attracted to 15 year old girls? Whoa, what the fuck? Is that true? Yeah, there's a video. Yeah, there's a video out there. I was talking about um, Halloween uh girls dressed up for halloween and some of them you know were like dressed up in the outfits and i'm like look if you want to be a be a slut i'm all for it whatever um and it was one of those things you know you're just saying Wait, things can to... i play the clip yeah if you gotta play it place and there's all these girls coming in in their halloween outfits and girls i love your halloween outfits i mean i am not gonna lie to you i like if you want to wear a skirt that's like a quarter inch from your ass crack i i'm not gonna argue with you that's a good decision. You're making good decisions. Uh, two, two suggestions though. Uh, the first, could you stop being, you know, 15? Because you're making me feel like a ball. And um, secondly, uh, could you do it in this general area? Just kind of, just kind of wear that on, just set right down here, in in the face area. What the fuck? What, what, what I said. Okay, I you said that. you said if you're gonna dress up like a s for Halloween, that's totally fine. If you want to wear your skirt inches from your ass, totally fine. But can you stop being 15? And also, can you sit on my face? Yeah, I think you probably should not do it when you're 15 years old. And if you are not 15 year old, please sit on my face. Thank you. Yeah, very simple. But I mean, listen, I think everybody out there, no matter who you are, you need to be pro slut. Why right? is your why we, is your girlfriend okay with you cheating on on her? Oh, we we immediately walked that back after that documentary. She, I'm like, look, if I ever do that to you, you better rain a bob at me. You better cut it off and throw it out the window. If she can but, find, I don't it. know. I think she just really loves me. If <laughs> she can find it, yeah. it's in there somewhere. She found it earlier. Pretty no problem. The point that I'm making is everyone should be pro. -slut. We celebrate when men are. And listen, if you have any hope of getting laid out there, it's probably going to be vice. Just be great. <laughs> I added Tommy and it just hung up on everyone. <laughs> you seen Ethan Ralph going hard at you and Wings, huh? I didn't watch his latest thing, but Ethan Ralph just does what Ethan Ralph does. I feel like he's just like desperate for any level of clout. I don't really pay a lot of attention to Ethan anymore. The last time I paid attention to Ethan was all the Frank Hassel stuff, and I was just kind of done with him. So he can he can say what he wants to say. He can do what he wants to do if it gives him entertainment. Do it. Uh, if I'm he gonna... wants to ride, if he wants to ride the coattails of this show for clout, go right ahead, Ethan. I'm glad to have you on our coattails. So for those of you guys that don't know, basically Wings of Redemption was talking shit to uh, Ethan Ralph on on our live stream. He responded, and then, of course, you know, Wings kept calling him a sex offender, this and that. Boogie then went in and said that he was milking Ethan Ralph. This is some craziness. So I single-handedly blew out both of these two fat motherfuckers in the corner of your screen. Wings of Redemption over on the left. Boogie 2988 over on the right. Absolute jokes of humans. No entertainment value whatsoever. And they want to talk about their feminist credentials. They're all about defending women, of course. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? Well, first off, let me tell you this. Fuck a bitch. That's always been the Ralph Amell motto. Second off, they don't give a fuck about women. Wings is too busy advocating for fucking underage women. And there's clip after clip after clip of him doing so where it's not just a one-off statement. The guy is a sick fucking file and their statement after statement proving that and if that wasn't bad enough look at that big hog that he's cozied up next to could you imagine having to go to sleep to that every fucking night ladies and gentlemen i would literally put the gun in my mouth and say goodbye to this sad fucking world if that was my life you see the ralph amell didn't get into this game to cozy up next to some fat heifer like wings of redemption did and live out in the fucking sticks in a god 
fucking shed. I'm living here in paradise. You know what I'm doing today? You know why the show's going to be late? Because I'm going out with my 10 out of 10 dime piece Latina girlfriend to have Marcasitas in the Centro Square here in Merida, Wings. I don't live out in the fucking middle of nowhere. People point and laugh at your existence, you fat motherfucker. And you know the difference between me and you and this other joke boogie that I'm about to go off on here in a second? You two weigh about a thousand pounds combined. I do not. I'm down to 180 pounds. I'm slim and trim because unlike you two jokes, I have the willpower to get better. You sit on your fat ass and beg Daddy Keemstar for an extra shekel instead of do anything for yourself every time i tune in to you fat f***s and you're not fucking sucking off keemstar's dick, you're whining about how pathetic your fucking lives are well guess what you're right they are fucking pathetic both of you two pieces of fucking shit are pathetic and boogie you got a lot of nerve trotting out this absolute disgrace as if you're supposed to be patted on the back for absconding with a Hearted 20 year old she looks like she was held in the basement for the first 19 years of her life she obviously has an iq of about 73 and you think you think that's impressive to the ralph Amel? boogie she looks like sh she would have to to be with somebody like you you're not impressing anybody you're paying her bills you're sitting there getting wheeled around in a mother wheelchair both you fat can't hold a candle to me. You never could. You're boring as fuck. And the next time you'll be exciting is when you fucking yourself on air. Both you motherfuckers suck. I would beat the fuck out of both of you in the same night. Give me Boogie first for the warm up and then line up that fat gay motherfucker Jordy Jordan with the stripper name and I'll knock his goddamn in the next week. Neither one of you motherfuckers want anything to do with really fucking with the Ralph Amell because unlike Keemstar, unlike all this other fake and scheduled shit, I'm coming, motherfucker, and I'm coming hard. Well, there you have it. Ethan Ralph uh, coming and coming hard. <laughs> He's coming hard. <laughs> He's coming hard. Just, I just, having just watched this video, it's what a, like a 12-year-old thinks a tough guy lacks like. It's like if a 12 year old, it's like you see these videos all the time. Like when a kid gets his camera for the first time and he like tries to posture, he's like all tough. That's what Ethan Rouse sounds like in this video. It's a joke. Didn't he turn out a fight? Keen? Yeah, I was Did trying to set up a fight with him and Andy Worski. And um, I was like, dude, you can't say the N word and you can't use uh, homophobic slurs or they're, they won't let me put on this fight. And no. uh, his response was to call me an N word and an F sport slur. And I was like, okay, well, there's nothing I can do. Yeah. yeah. What do you I mean, want me to do? That's his entire brand. That's his entire brand. He's like, you're trying to censor me. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm trying to make the fight happen. I can't if you're going to do that. I think there's no shot and no chance in hell that he actually fights any of these guys. And, and you couldn't make it happen if he's going to continue that behavior. But yeah, I don't Jordy know. Jordy would crack a skull. Jo I, Jordy would just crack a skull. There's no, that guy's got a glass jaw to begin with. Like every time anyone's ever hit him, he's hit the ground. I, you know, I'll give him, I'll give him credit for one thing and one thing only losing the he's weight, lost some weight. Yeah. Congratulations, man. You did something I've not been able to do. That's How the did one he lose the weight? Good, Does anyone know? I don't know. It's uh, the way he acts and the way he talks. I think he's dosing something. He's probably shooting testosterone, cow steroids up his or something. He's in Mexico, so it's probably a lot uh -huh. easier to lose weight. Yeah. Did did he go to Mexico so he doesn't have to pay child support or something? He filmed a girl uh, that he was engaged in uh, a sex act with, and uh, I think she went after him. That's what I was told. I don't know if that's true or not. So that's why um, he ran away. Maybe yeah, that's what I heard. I don't know if that's true, uh, in fairness. but Never take Keemstar's friendship for granted. Oh, this is going to be a good one. Me and Blade. Here we go. This is a stupid. Uh, jumper. <laughs> Sit down. Oh! Dude, you need to play this game the way it's supposed to be played. Use guns. I do what, I, I, do what I want. Get better. Get better. Oh! Oh! Dude, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it, dude. Oh, you out of my house? Do you want to take this outside? I'll take you outside. Do you want to take it outside? You ready? Let's do this. <laughs> what the fuck is this? I don't even remember making this. Hey, Blade, say hello to my little friend. Okay, bye-bye.
hate you. Dude. And I, I will never be friends with you. Who, who's the daddy? Whoops. <laughs> oh my god, what is this? Feels not my. Okay. How old, how old is that? Uh, that's got to be from 2012. I don't even remember making that. Yeah. That's funny. Okay, okay. Lao Cow Live, Wings, Boogie, Tommy C, myself, and, and whoever else is on the cast at that point. We need to recreate that video that me and Play did. That, I'm, all, I'm all for it. That was yeah, funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. This person says, as someone who's been watching PKA for over 10 years and the fans wanting an in-person episode forever, which will absolutely never happen, what are the chances that we can see Lao Kao live in person? Mainly a question to keep guys. What do you think? Would you do it? I'd do it. Yeah, I'd do absolutely. it. How much is it? <laughs> that's yeah, the, the, right. Yeah, pay me. I like money. Um, no, that's not what I mean. How much is it gonna cost me? That's what I meant. Oh yeah, no, I I want to make. I want to get paid. I like money. Uh, I need money for goods and services. Can I, do I gotta go to Buffalo? Because that's the um. That's a short flight for me. We'd have to figure out um, what city got the most votes, right? And yeah. once we figured out the city that has the most votes where most of our fans are at, then we'd have to do it there. We'd have to really, really promote it. We'd have to sell tickets, obviously, to it. We'd have to have crazy security. It would cost us to do it right at least 20 grand, and that's on the low end. But we could probably afford to do it, and it would be epic. You know, you got to understand, we can't just have a fucking fan meetup, dude. We got to do a live podcast. It's got to be on stage, which means we need an arena. There's going to be people going there that's screaming, Wings is a file, buddy, boogies up. You know what I mean? So there's got to be some type of security. It'll be like, all right, you know, get that person out of there. There's a lot to it. It's going to cost 20 grand, but I'm down to do it. If the show keeps making I'm money, good. why hasn't Buggy sold all of his collectibles to settle his smaller debts? It's a long I post. So here we go. Realistically, yeah, the only debt that he should keep is the mortgage. And if he mm. sold all his collectibles, he would probably be able to wipe out any small debts he has. Why I didn't he do this when his girlfriend entered his life? He's been with her for a while now and seems happy for it and isn't in a suicidal headspace. So what's the holdup of uh, trying to get a restart going? Uh, the only explanation I could think of is that he enjoys burdering himself and his loved ones. It's not like you need a financial advisor to solve this. Uh, all he would, would have to do is search good financial habits um, how to become debt free on Google and everything. That, you get the point. I'm not going to read anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. you get the point. So thoughts. I mean, there. Are, I'm just do not underestimate how lazy I am. That's the biggest issue. I just rather make the monthly payment than to like try to sort through a million magic cards and slowly sell them off and do all this stuff. Try to get max value. Uh, when it comes down to it, and it will probably sometime this year. When it comes down to it, that I have to absolutely sell it. That'll be motivation enough, right? I'll, I'll get off my ice and finally get it absolutely done. And Caleb Hammer uh, really hammered it home when I went on his show. And he's like, look, if you pay this off, if you pay this off, it's going to put 600 more dollars in your pocket every month. Do this, do this. So I am. I'm in the process of getting it done. We started sorting magic cars and stuff. But I don't know. Most of this shit in this room, like, take a look at the stuff behind me. Who's buying a Boogie 298 poster or fan made? Who's buying a Boogie 298 show? Most of this shit is worth $5, $10 at a yard sale. You sell everything in this room, we make like 500 bucks. Oh that my that's, God. that's a monthly payment. I have payment. a really good idea. No? All right. Wait, somebody's calling Lol Cow. Is that Jordy Jordan? It's Muda. All right, bet. Let's add him. So I have an idea. With with Boogie's um, stuff that he needs to sell, why doesn't Boogie bring them to the live show and sell them there? Yeah. You get a trailer, you bring up a bunch of stuff, you sell it to the fans right there. The fans are low ball, yeah, I would. Keem, why haven't you made Boogie weigh in yet? 400 pounds my ass to ma maintain 400 pounds at his height, and he eats a minimum of 4,000 calories daily, but claims to only eat a single... Yeah, how much you weigh? That Chick-fil-A sandwich in that Caleb Hammer episode, that was a snack. That was the food I ate on the way home to eat the real meal. Y'all want to see what I weigh? Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Hey, Desi. Go get that scale from the Travis, bathroom, will you? Travis, um, you I want to see this. Travis, yeah. you Hold on a second. I'll be right back. So I'm going to say 409. That's my guess right now. Here's the scale. There you go. I hear you. 
It's pounds because I have 404. There we go. 404. Jesus, it's double me. Well, wait, they thought you were lying. So what? What was the weight they thought he was? Damn, he lost <laughs> the entire. They had to pick the entire king screen up to move the camera. Four oh four. It was four oh four. Hey, Boogie, put your girlfriend on. Boogie, much more can we? Can we just talk to your girlfriend for like ten minutes? We'll be nice. Yeah, we'll be nice. They want to know if they can talk to you. For for five minutes, we'll keep it yeah, light. Put the headphones on and let you say hello. We'll we'll keep it light. You want to do that? They said the promise will be nice. They promise they'll keep it light. You want to come lean in? You can ask her one question. That's what we've decided. You can lean in and you can ask her one okay. question. Okay. A piece. A piece. I, I'll one, go first. One quick. We'll start with one. I'll go. We'll first. start with one. Give her the headphones. Okay? I'll give her the headphones. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Hello. Hi. How are you? <laughs> So you're, you're Buggy's girlfriend, correct? Oh. Okay. Um, just touch your hair if you're being held against your will. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day. Okay, have a great thank one, Desi. <laughs> good job. Good work. You don't look at anything like Carrie from Stephen King. <laughs> That was so good. That's classic. <laughs> so good. <laughs> uh, How old are you, Boogie? Because you're only like a year older than me, right? I'm four. I'm 49. Baby, you did great. Oh, you are two years old. People me. love you. They love you in chat. Yeah, I'm 49. She's yeah. she turns 21 in two months. So lucky guy dude i only take her to a bar i my girlfriend is 23 years old and i still think boogie's a pedophile <laughs> <laughs> i do my, my wife is 43 is that okay <laughs> i'm a big loser here huh <laughs> my wife's 43 and uh you guys are dating 20 year olds i i, I guess you won you know, I mean, at the end of the day, like everybody has their preferences and that kind of thing. But the reality of it is my major quality when it comes to a woman is whether or not they can put up with my bullshit. And uh, she can't. That's every man, Boogie. Yeah. You're not surprising anybody. That's, that's yeah. literally I found somebody who wants to sit down and play Minecraft well, with me and watch the fucking office where he runs, play Pokemon Go with me. And I'm, I'm, on, I'm on, if she's old enough to, to vote, she's old enough to, you know, if you, could take a, if you could take a bullet for Uncle Sam, you can take a load from me. That's my opinion. So. <laughs> Jesus oh, Christ. Fuck is this show? <laughs> All right, Boogie, listen. Um, there was a rant that I was about to fucking go into, um, but then we got distracted by your, the, the donation, your weight, and you know your girlfriend yeah, being yeah. held against her will and all that. I never come across really any of our fans that actually like you. And I think it's yeah, because yeah. they don't know you. Every once in a while, I'll see a comment here and there. They're like, you know what? Boogie's kind of funny. Or... You know what? I don't hate his boogie as much as I did before this podcast. So mm -hmm. somewhat, some, some sense of realness is coming through this podcast, but like, dude, like people just hate you and you haven't done the things online or, or the evil fucking things that other people like Sneeko, like, you don't you're not outlandish, yep. like Sneeko yep. saying crazy, horrible things. I, I really think it's because they look at you and they, they think, well, he's not authentic. He's just a fraud. I think that Bingo. is it. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah. No, no, he, did, he did. He did. He did. Listen to him too. Lakeem. He's like, he's like, yeah, that's it. That's it. Well, there, there was the time that you said you got swatted when he didn't. There was that, right? Yeah, I mean, I changed the dates. I I did get these like weaponized welfare checks like three times that year, but it didn't happen in December. It happened in like August or whatever. You know? Yeah, but li listen, I don't even want to hold up on that because yeah. that's that that's just part of it, right? It's the always like you go online and you play victim, and so that whole thing about lying about the dates was just part of it. Like every time, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's think about let's think about Christmas. All right, I didn't tell you guys this on last stream, right? But I I wanted to have a rant on Boogie. I'm trying to schedule a time for these guys to f record and Boogie's like, well, uh, I have to go hang out with my family. I'm like, I don't care about your f Christmas. I don't care about your f holiday. You have to do the show. Like, I don't f 
fucking care. Like, why are you trying to make me feel bad that it's going to cost you $500 for a hotel? I don't care. Like, we have to do the fucking show. But even in that moment where we had to get the show done, you were trying to guilt trip me. And I feel like to the audience. We're, I mean, we're, I thought I just thought we could get it done on Thursday. And I'm like, if we have to get it done on Wednesday, I'm going to have to change all these plans. Can we please get it done on Thursday? And it turns out we couldn't. So we got this I shit have the money to make plans. I done. mean, I barely have the money to make plans and I don't have a financial problem. That's what yeah, I'm trying that, to figure right, out. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to piss away what little I do have to spend for Christmas. And, you know, look, to, to I, be honest, I drive a hybrid. It, it, look, hold on. I, I, I drive a hybrid. It takes me one tank of gas to get up to Branson and back. That's $30, okay? It's, it cost me $100 for a hotel room. It cost me another $200 for silver dollar city tickets. It cost me another $50 to go to Wild World. My Christmas gift to myself ran about $300 total, dollars, okay? If you include the fast food and everything else that we got, I probably spent $350, $400, okay? Uh, or maybe even a little bit more because I'm bad accountant, cast, fast food receipts. I deserved it. I wanted it. And I didn't want anything to get in the fucking way. But you know what? I made it happen. I packed up my shit. I took it to Branson. I, I recorded in the hotel. I even had to buy a new web camera while I was up there to make sure I looked my best because I forgot the one I have here. And I got it done. I'm here to work. But the point is, I was just like, can we get it get shit done on Thursday, can we? Turns out we couldn't. We got it done. Papa Gut is someone that's been doing reviews on Lolcow here and there. We need to get Papa Gut on here, but I have a. I would horrible, love to get Papa Gut on. Yeah. I have a horrible relationship with him, um, because I called him out for cheating on his wife, so he will not talk to me. So yeah, that's you guys are gonna have to reach out to him to set that up to get him on as a as a guest. Sure, I'll reach out to him. I want to tell everybody when you were going through your shit and we were trying to set up a low cal podcast. That you said you basically, you know, because I, I don't have a problem with you. I criticize tons of YouTubers. Yeah. You were like straight up with me and said, you know, Tommy, I don't like you. I wouldn't be talking to you any other way. Yeah, because you would because of the first two episodes, you'd been a complete wait, piece wait, wait, of wait, 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 piece wait, of shit. Wait. I hated piece, you. Piece of shit. I was you you had done that video. I didn't make you do that video. And if you if you go to the um the what episode, video are you talking about? No, I, I didn't. No, I'm, I'm talking, talking about the first two episodes of the podcast. What video are you talking about? The documentary. The documentary. I had to criticize you that. And no, then, I'm talking uh, off camera. You can criticize me, but like you were just like you were just you were doing your job, which was to put me in the hot seat and drill the shit out of me. And I didn't like it, and I didn't like you while you were doing it. Now that that's not the only thing you do. Now that you've developed a personality on the podcast, I actually like you quite a bit. But when all you were do is to play the foil to me, there you were boring. You were not fun to talk to. I didn't oh. want to talk to you. I didn't want to talk to you outside of the. Podcast. I think I was exciting now as hell. You developed. Now that you developed in a personality. No, look, you. Are you remember you're like this Last is you week. the first episode let's play apex legends after this i don't want to play apex <laughs> legends with a guy who's been a complete <laughs> Fair for enough. an hour right, you got me there okay <laughs> now yeah you want to play some apex legends let's play tonight i don't give a shit. let's turn the live stream into that sure now that you're not being an insufferable i, I like i have well, why would it be insufferable? you were being insufferable you wouldn't even want to get the fucking podcast going. You wouldn't even could. The clap is like the most legendary thing we ever we ever did, and you gave me a hard time on that. All I wanted I to do was get it done right. I didn't know what the fuck was going on after you drilled me for twenty minutes. You sat there and screamed at me for twenty minutes. Good. And I'm like, okay, Good. I don't know what the fuck is happening. It. Anymore. I don't know where the fuck I am anymore. You see, I think I could excel in this Twitch meta because honestly, I can sit there fully naked. And you still can't see anything. I got. I know he wants to see that. Girl. I don't care if they want to see it or not. They'll pay to not see Boogie, it. You know what I'm saying? Boogie, go do I that. I make good money. Boogie, go do that right now. What? Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Go stream on shit. Twitch with black bars over your Yeah, doubles. and then and then every time somebody donates 100 bucks, put on a piece of clothes. And then we'll, everybody here from this stream will go gas it up on Twitter. Be like, oh my God, this Ooh. girl is so hot. <laughs> yeah, I'll do, do it. it. Check out this hot chick. Can, can I show him no. here? There you go. There you go. That's a good boy. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. If you were what? completely naked standing up, your fat roll would hide your dick, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I have Peter Griffin syndrome. This is what I'm it's, saying. If you've seen okay. Peter Griffin naked in Family Guy, I, I don't need the black bars. Okay, do it. Right now? Mm. On Twitch? Yes. I'll do it. No, I'll do it right now for you. I'm going to no, do it no, right no, now no, for no, Tommy. No, Tommy, Tommy, yeah, no, no, yeah. bar Tommy needs to see. You ready, Tommy? No, no, no. Turn no, your... I don't want to see your shit. I mean, dude. No, no, listen, listen. Turn your camera. The money. Turn your camera off here, right? And me and Tommy yeah. will do the live reaction. Go over on Twitch and title your stream just talking black bars all right 
and then right. just stand up. You got to stand up, right? And I'm entirely certain you can see something. Actually, I'm 90 percent sure I'm gonna get banned. I'm not, I don't know how to do the black bars, but I'm telling you, I'm pretty sure they can see something. They can it's, see you, the very bottom. You can. The black bars are easy. You just add like a fucking black bar to OBS and then move. Doesn't it have, doesn't have to track. Doesn't have to like track. Dude, into one in the chat. If oh, this is not genius, he'll go viral. He will go by. I'll have drama or cover it. I'll call Gino right now. Yeah, honestly, let's do it. Let's break the internet one more time. All right, I'm currently live on Twitch. I'm getting everything set up. Shut up. Well, it's happening right now. It's happening right now. Oh my god. Make it happen. Black bar meta. Black bar <laughs> meta. Black bar meta. Wait, Here sure, we go, boys. Make sure the fat roll is hiding your dick. Yeah, yeah, it will be. It will be. Don't worry. And the black bar will be too. Okay. Daddy will show it all. Daddy will show it all. Here we go. Here we go. Black bar meta. 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 You gotta you gotta raise the bar up. No, you can, you can I think I can move this. this black bar. Hold on, let's see. Oh my god. Let's see. Can you still can you actually see? Oh, there you go. Oh, I can't see nothing. Yes, he's deodorant under his Peter Griffin. Oh my god, I'm seeing his boss. Are you gonna lose the channel? <laughs> Are you serious? You, you gotta pull the fucking balls. You gotta pull the fucking <laughs> He missed it. He didn't pull the bar right up. Famous Twitch. I showed you my titties. You showed him your nuts. I saw your nuts, dude. Those weren't nuts. That was skin. Yeah. No, they were nuts. Oh, I no, saw the nuts. nuts. I'm telling you, I know what. I know where my nuts are, Tommy. You went to the side, dude. You got that was fucking loose pants. skin. No, that was loose oh, skin. Was they can't me. No, it skin. wasn't. Those were a pair of I know where my nuts, nuts are, Tommy. I will fight nuts. him in court over this. I will nuts. make it. Put a woman in the court. chat if you saw nuts. I swear to God, you saw. I you saw my second fupa. That's I my second poopa. I, I tweeted it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, <laughs> I gotta get that too. Did you really? totally did showed you? your nuts. Really? I saw them. Oh I saw them clear God. as day. Oh my day. Clear as day, dude. Wait, wait, I'm wait. not even mildly kidding you. That looks like a sack of nuts, right? Oh but it is, God. Lucy. I swear to God, I have two oh fupas. That's my second fupa. Oh That's my, my second God. fupa. That's my second FUPA. I, they can't ban me. They can try, but they Wait, can't. You guys remember this? Like, you know, I do the thousand dollar bet with Blade or whatever, and mm -hmm. it's right here, right now on on uh, stream. I do a thousand dollar bet with him to stop drinking. He goes, no, 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 no. Well, I didn't know this, but he had plans to go to another viewer's house and drink that night, like literally that night. That night. So he owes you a grand. So that's why he wouldn't do the bet. No, he didn't do the bet. And oh, he didn't of that. course he gets mm -hmm. wasted and he's staying with someone that's like a Unabomber. All right. Like it's a guy that lives in the middle of nowhere and it's just him. <laughs> he's got nothing Jesus. but guns and all kinds of crazy shit. And Blade got so drunk. He woke the guy up. So the guy started beating on Blade drunk. Oh, dude, you're oh my God. God. Dude, dude, shut the fuck up and get your shoes on, dude. Let me bring you up top, dude. You're being huge. I'm not being easy. Yes, I'm, you I'm are. Target, get I'm... your shoes on. Hug me, hug me, hug me. I'll hug you as you get your shoes on. You woke me up out of a dead sleep. To be same, a same, weirdo. Same with me. Same with me. No, not same with you. What the f are you saying? Same with you, dude. Get your shoes on so I can bring you up top. You're being crazy. I fell asleep and you woke me up. Then you f tried to pretend to go back to sleep. You're so weird. Get your shoes on. Hey, do you want me to push you over? You're being a bitch. Don't hold on to my fucking pole. Get your shoes on. Dude, because dude, you're being crazy. Get your goddamn no, shoes no, on no, so we can leave. I, I'm good. Dude, don't fucking, that was with fucking one pinky finger. Get your goddamn shoes on so I can bring you to your fucking stupid trailer. You're being insane. Okay, I'm sorry. Get your shoes on, you drunk crazy person. Okay. That, that's a hat. You're a crazy bitch, dude. You woke me up out of a goddamn dead sleep, pretended to go back to sleep, and now you need to leave. Let's go. Get your goddamn shoes on. Do you want me to drag you out of my house no. with one hand while I film it? Stop. Stop. I, 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 I don't care, dude. I'm filming it right now. I'm on the live stream filming it right now. You don't get it. No. <clears throat> leave my goddamn house. Stop holding on to my pole and leave. 
Uh, you're going up. Guys, guys, he, Blade has been at this guy's house for roughly about 10 hours. This is the first 10 hours that he met this guy and is staying at this guy's house. And it's already gotten to this point. Top, you fucking woke me up. No, I don't even care How about you. How do you feel about that? Anymore. You, know, you were close Dude, to this guy at one point. It's just, you want your dumb I, to me. To, to how I feel, like honestly, this is yeah. just like this is Blade. This, is, bro, I have so many Blade stories. I can make a fucking movie. I can make a Netflix documentary. All right, you guys want to hear a Blade story? I got a good sure. one. Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, we all go out. We're having a fucking great time. Great night, right? Blade starts getting wasted. You know, starts stealing girls' drinks and shit, doing doing you know Blade, shit. and we're like that we're out of here all right we leave blade at the bar we go to our denny's we get our food we safely get home we call it a night right well blade would stay at the bar so long that the bar knew we're if we let him leave so the bar itself would have to drive blade it was only like two miles or something back to his house right so blade's the last one in the bar everyone else goes home they put Blade in a fucking car and they drive him home. They take him to his apartment and as they're pulling down Blade Street, they notice a cop has someone else pulled over and say, and they tell Blade, good thing you didn't drive. It's good thing we're driving you home because the cops are here and Blue like, oh, figure it out, right? So they let Blade out of the car and they say, go walk into your apartment, all right? Blade has to walk a total of 20 feet to go up into his apartment and go to bed. Blade walks about five feet, stops, notices the, that there's a cop, and starts screaming, your pigs, your pigs, your pigs, figure the F out, <laughs> F words, calls them Enslers, and starts running down the road. Not, not away from the cops, past the cops, like towards them wow. to run past them. So the cop is sitting there, right? The bartender who just dropped Blade off is like, what the fuck? Like, so confused, right? The cop is sitting there, like, confused. And then the cop realizes, okay, f I got to run after this guy. Runs after Blade, tackles him, and arrests him, and sends him to jail. He had to spend the night in fucking jail for disturbing the fucking peace, for screaming the <laughs> Like, it's just, like, that makes no fucking sense. One time... Uh, Scott, Scott's driving, right? Cause he's the only sober one. His name was Scott Kim Martin. He was our cameraman and blade hated Scott. They were roommates. They can, they, these two hated each other, right? They dropped me off and blades drunk and they're fucking arguing. I'm like, all right, see you guys. And blade goes, I want nothing to do with you guys. <laughs> Calling him. I, I'm getting away from you. I want to get away from you. So they're driving down the road, going about 30 miles per hour on my road. Blade opens up the door and jumps out of the fucking car. <laughs> at 30, at 30 miles an hour, he jumped out of the fucking car. Now, here's the crazy thing. Scott Ken Martin was recording it, all right? And just about a month ago, he sent me the recording. So I got the recording. He said, I would love to see it. I would absolutely love all right, to see yeah. it. Yeah. It's just yeah. audio. So, uh, you really gonna f Talk so, me. Brian, who could you have pulled tonight? Let me know. I could have pulled anything. What's her name? Anything. Other than the cow that mooed? I would have turned her. Right here. She's right here. No. Get the out of here. Was it? Was it? Old McDonald had a farm. Scott, are you serious? I'm dead serious. I would have pulled anything so, you've ever had in so, your life. So, I would have pulled anything you've ever so had Brian, in your fucking life. So, Brian, you're telling me you've had better than anything I could ever possibly yes, have? Yes, I have, bro. And and you've had higher quality sex ever in your life? With girls? Yeah, f*** it. <laughs> Yeah, I have, bro. I've knocked him down. Oh, you've knocked him down. I'm yeah, him down, bro. it's called cow tipping, Brian. It's no. called. You're my friend. I love that's, you. That's good. I don't really love you. You're a f it. But <laughs> I've loved you at one point in time. Oh, but have I've you? knocked. I deny the those claims. Just in your world, bro. <laughs> hey, I'm you right here. You are a fucking next to comer around me, bro. Listen, uh, man. That scared I me. I thought he was going to say the N word. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't work on a farm. Are you? I knocked your cousin, your wife, your mother, everything. All right, I'm bringing. It, I'm bringing it towards the end so you can hear this. See it. Get the out of my car! Get the out of my car! Because you're a. Get the out of here! 
Dude, get in the front. I'm locking my car. Get in the front. I'm locking my car. I'm locking my fifth car. Do you think in your lifetime do you ever pull a more prison than me? Yes. You're delusional. Yes. I'm rolling out here. I'm rolling out here. Oh, hey, hey. Oh, my God. That's him. He just, he just jumped out. Wait, I think that was the moment he jumped out of the car. Anyhow. The story Jesus, gets yeah. better. Uh, Mr. Rizzo, a.k.a. Only Use Me Blade, um, he bought a life, life case. A life case is a phone case, and it's guaranteed for life. And in their commercial, they got rock climbers, extreme athletes, like, with the phone case, and their phone never f***ing breaks, right? Well, because he jumped out of the f***ing car, his phone broke. So... <laughs> <laughs> So the, this is the very next day. He's got a, ha a hangover the very fucking next day. He uploads, decides to upload a video calling out this company saying that their product is garbage. And that oh, no kidding. And he goes, I just dropped my phone on the floor and it smashed my phone. Your product is garbage. I want a full <laughs> refund for the case. And I want a full refund for the phone and he had his fans <laughs> spamming life case and being like yo your product sucks like giving him one star doesn't tell anybody that he jumped out of a moving vehicle the night before <laughs> the most insane shit ever uh, that's too fucking funny but I'm man. telling you I got so many dude this I one can see what do you, wait, Lakeem, let me ask you something. What are you going to do when he's gone? I mean, you guys have had legendary tales. I mean, he is not doing well. I What's don't talk to Blade. Over the last, over the last like five years, I don't talk to Blade. I really don't. Mm. The times that I talk to him, you guys know about it because it's either he's drunk calling me on stream and I regrud regrudgingly answer or we've had him on Bad. the show. I just, dude, I didn't invite him to my 40th birthday party. I did not invite mm. him. And he just showed up, right? So through the grapevine, <laughs> he found out about my 40th birthday party in Vegas. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, I was so disappointed to see him. It's like on that level. Like, I don't like him. Like, and it's not because of him. It's because of drunk him. But you love it. You love him. Give me honest. I don't. You. I mean, how? I don't. Yeah, but you had so many legendary situations with him, man. I mean, come on now. But... Yeah, I understand you trying to break free. I'm not trying to call you out on that, but I mean, you clearly love the guy. You can tell. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna affect you when you lose him. I would just be honest. Because he's going. If he if he keeps this up, he's going. But there's I no mean, point. There's no point of being his friend. Do you understand what I'm saying? Our friendship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I agree. Yeah. My friendship. I agree. My friendship with him is just me being like, dude, stop drinking. Stop fucking drinking. Yeah. yeah that's the, yeah, actually no, there's no friendship anymore you know what i mean there's gonna be up people that are gonna blame you no matter what too you know that's gonna hurt but too, that's what i'm that, love him. this is what i'm trying yeah. to tell the world is that i'm not really friends with him anymore we don't really talk yeah. we don't kick it anymore because it's not cool mm. what he's doing he's blamed you in the past i found a, a video years ago i think we covered an sftp there where he blamed you for shit that you couldn't possibly be responsible for for here's the thing i noticed about blade when i uh, when we did the uh, podcast with him, he's kind of fun. He's a fun guy. He's oh yeah. Guy. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. If you if you go and hang out with Blade, and he's completely sober, he'll tell you the greatest mm. story you've ever heard. Bro, I'm sure yeah. he can tell you sure. the dumbest fucking story ever and make it like edgy or seat exciting. Like he is the greatest storyteller ever. It's alcoholism. That's all it is. Yeah. I I grew up with it. I'm I've been around it my whole life. I'm probably wow. a sufferer myself but it's just but it is tommy, what it is but tommy here's the other thing i don't think he's an alcoholic like what do you think he is what, what does it mean but he doesn't have withdrawals he doesn't fucking sit there and need alcohol he can be sober right now for like two weeks straight right he's huh. actually not alcoholic and even though we see him drunk out of his fucking mind all right the one thing that he does that alcoholics don't do is he's constantly slamming water. Have you noticed this? You'll see him. Yes, I've seen He'll him doing slam. the video. Dude, IRL alcoholics street. don't fucking do that. Alcoholics aren't fucking slamming. I'm telling you, bro. It's he's not like your typical alcoholic. He is choosing to do this. It's fucking weird. When I you was know? when when he lived here in Buffalo, he would go like four mm. days without drinking. Oh, Jesus. And then he'd be like, mm. let's get lit.
You know, like it's it's not like it's not like he needs it. It's like he's choosing yeah, so every time to get fucking retarded. Like it, I don't know. I don't know. It's not. Were you guys making good money back then? I'm like, or were you living? I'll be honest. Like, uh, were you living like check check? I was rich. I, you know, I'm. Coming, oh, you're rich. When when he came over there, you. Yeah, rich. I was coming off of Fortress Craft and mm. Bitcoin and all kinds of crazy. Shit. But he had no piece of that, correct? No, I was. There's a okay. clip somewhere on the internet when Bitcoin was seven dollars and fifty cents, and I'm trying to convince him and Scott to buy some. I was like, just put like a hundred oh bucks God. in, and they wouldn't do it. Lazy to the point that it's like disgusting. Like, like not yeah. wiping his ass. All right, not yeah. not brushing his teeth, yeah. not putting on deodorant. Like lazy to the yeah. point where it's like, fucking, there's the. I don't know. There's something fucking wrong with him. Dude, and, 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 and you know what? The reason why I grilled him on the live stream about him making money, because I, me and me and Brantley were trying to figure out the donations that were coming in. I'm like, mm -hmm. I think he made six grand on this stream. He got mad when I confronted him on the live stream this week. He was like, I didn't make six grand. I didn't make six grand. Okay, maybe you didn't, but you made over four. Like he made a lot of money that stream. Anyhow, what did I make? A month. Anyhow, yeah, I'm like, where's your money going? And he has no answer. Where is his money? It's not going to alcohol because think about it. Even if he drinks three bottles, that's only fucking what? 200 bucks? Uh, 30 bucks at most. Oh, well, one bottle of, uh, yeah, three, four. Yeah, we're talking he doesn't, 150. He doesn't have a car payment. He doesn't have a fucking house payment. Where is your money? Bro, he is wearing the same clothes that he had a decade ago. There's nothing new to his wardrobe. Nothing. He told us on the podcast he doesn't really spend money on anything. So what? It's not a money issue. The whole thing, like, oh, it's, I it's... need to stream because I need money. Where is your money then? Where is your money? And he told me the most money that he spent recently is on uh, RVs and fucking hotels and shit. It's like, what? Even that? It's like $100 a night. You're making well over $100 in tips and donations. Oh, Where's sure. the fucking money going? Boogie, are you going to fucking let it go? Why am I'm I not seeing a Twitter video from you? Calling out the completionist and being like, "You are a piece of fucking shit." Like, dude, I did. I I, I, I called him out. <laughs> I I literally listen. I have so many mutual acquaintances. I get invited to so many of the same conventions that his friends are at, and I still talked about it on my channel, and I still talked about it on this last podcast. Yeah. Because the reality of it is, when some somebody fucks up that big, they got to get called out. I do have a line, you know, and that line, I have to sleep at night. I have to I have to be true to my own personal morals. And stuff like that. I'm always going to try to do that to some degree online, you know. But even though I knew that the next gaming convention, I have one in January. The next gaming convention I drive out to, it's going to be real awkward because I joined the dog pile, and I'm still want to do it when the time comes. Yeah, but boogie, I'll never be an boogie, asshole. Let me, about it. I don't let me, boogie, like boogie, 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 boogie. Let me help you with your mindset, right? Because you know, mm -hmm. people call me evil and keen stars are the bad guy and da 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 da, and they say to me shit like, "How can you sleep at night?" And I think to myself. Well, yeah, how could I sleep tonight if I didn't fucking call that person out? If I didn't talk shit to that dude? If I didn't do this? Yeah. If I didn't do that? I do shit because I want to, because that's how I feel. And I wouldn't be yeah. able to sleep tonight if I didn't fucking run my mouth, right? So it's that's like, really it's, a, it's a mindset. It. It's a mindset. <laughs> I'm letting myself, I'm, I'm easing into it every day. Eat a little bit more every day. I think you see it on my channel. I think you see it on Twitter more. I think you definitely see it on the Low Cow podcast. I'm easing into it every day because it's very uncomfortable territory for me to just let go and do whatever the hell I want to do and feel however the hell I want to feel. I'm, I, you know, I spent an entire life trying to protect myself and everyone around me from why? Whoever. Why? No, I don't know. Why? I wish I fucking knew. Why be such a fucking phony? I don't know. Let me give I you. Mean, but here's one thing I'll but promise every you. Every day I, I do a little bit more. Every day I do a little bit more, and I try to be a little bit more myself, and try to figure out who that person is. And I think tonight, I hope to God I showed that I can do it, because this is pure, unadulterated, entertaining. Just whatever the f felt good. Say whatever I wanted to say. Do whatever I wanted to do. And it was fun to do. Fair enough. I love doing it. Yeah. Uh, when Amareth came out and she was like saying that you know her husband, her ex husband, was making her be a whore online and all this other stuff and. You know, she yeah. was in this horrible, abusive relationship and, you know, she, <coughs> after she got a divorce with him and left him and exposed him, she came on with like a hoodie and was like, I'm no longer a slave, basically. Right. 
I put out a tweet saying amorous to blame for this sexual content too. And the entire fucking world tried to cancel me for that. Called me a victim blamer, a piece of shit, a horrible person, this sure. and that. Right. Sure. And now yeah. she's streaming naked with black bars. So I was proven. Right. <laughs> I so, saw that. Today. So in yeah, my head, that. in my head, it's like, how could I sleep at night? Knowing that this is how I felt, but I didn't express myself. Yeah, you're ent uh, you're entirely right. At the end of the day, I've lived by this moral code that I thought was super important to me, and I'm learning to, that it's not that important to me. I think it was just a survival technique. I think it was just trying me trying to fit in. I think it was just trying to get people to 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 like me. But you know, I, I, my girlfriend's 20 years old. Fuck you if you don't like it. I don't really care. Yeah, but nobody uh, likes I, you. I, I, I this talk is about what we're trying about. to say. Do what I talk about. Yeah. You, yeah, I know. Trust me. I know. It worked. It you, backfired. It you backfired. Are the utterly. most hated person I've ever seen online. Like, nobody. It's really with mind boggling, you. isn't it? I'm telling you, dude. Like, I at one point was the most hated person. It didn't slow me down at all. Right? No. Yeah. Yeah. And then it came to a point where people started respecting me because I was like uncancelable. By the way, Keem, you're welcome for me and Clown on being uncancelable. <laughs> I mean, I, I had to fight you guys. You guys disagree with me. So, you know, if you, yeah, but still, you that's really why think, it worked. If, yeah. Anyhow, Aspen Gold, that is like, uh, at least Keemstar is Keemstar, you know, at least with Keemstar, you yeah. know who Keemstar is, right? You know, you know, Keemstar doesn't pretend to be somebody. He was just saying this recently. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that's the most important thing. Uh, the reason you why wanna, do you. Do you want to know? You want an exclusive of something that I will? I, I I never thought I would say online. This is something I've discussed with my 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 shaman recently. Um, shaman? Go, yeah, yeah. My my. I'm, I'm doing a, some more sessions with Ryan. Oogie um, boogie. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing some more sessions with Ryan soon. Okay. Um, he, he's the guy who gave me the mushrooms and the. And I the, saw that. That was great. But go uh, ahead. I'm so, sorry. But we were talking about this, and I'll just be honest with you. I'm fucking scared. Shit. List, man i'm scared all the time you know i like haunted houses because it's controlled chaos i like roller coasters because it's controlled chaos the world isn't controlled chaos like you you know i don't know i've f***ed up so many times i hurt myself so many times so i'm like in this like cage i keep myself in this cage and i'm scared to step out of it i'm scared to even explore who the hell i actually am and so with these next sessions with ryan that's the goal explore authentic true genuine boogie figure out who that is figure out what i think how i feel what i do whatever I don't know what put me in that cage. I don't know what, what locked me in that cage. I stepped out of it a little bit more and more every day over the last six months. I, you think I would ever had the balls a year ago to say, hey, I'm dating a 20-year-old girl. I know people are going to lose their mind over it. And my original assessment was I'm just going to hide this from everybody until somebody threatened to leak it, and then we decided to put it out in the world, right? So I'm trying. I'm trying really hard. And it's something I hope that the Local Podcast can give me the opportunity to do, which is just figure out who the I am. Okay, think about this. 56-year-old Boogie is dating a fucking 14-year-old. 56? I'm 49. Is, How do they age Is dating a 14-year-old looking girl who's watching Disney in the other room. She looks like an adult because she is an adult. She looks like an adult because she is an adult. You sicko. She looks 14. She, she, she looks doesn't. like an adult because she is an adult. I can't help it if you're perverted. <laughs> Oh, ass looks at somebody and sees a 14 year old girl, which is 21 years old for sakes. That's up to you. I can't fix that okay. for you. Okay. These are members. All right. This is not trolls. These are members. All right. Members, oh, yeah. please type in the chat the age Boogie's girlfriend looks. All right. Just, Go ahead. Just the age yeah. you think she looks. Okay. 19, 18. Oh, you're doing pretty well. 17. Uh, clearly, you're a pet. Boogie. <laughs> 16, 19, 11, 11. <laughs> what? Check his hard drives. Check his hard drives. You're going to pound me in the ass prison. 15, 11, 15, 15, 11, 16, 15, 16. 16. No, she looks like an adult because she is an adult. Jesus she's Christ. Like, she's what like is Carrie. Wrong with you people? She's like Sissy Spacek from Carrie. Oh, yeah, she does look like Carrie. But Sissy yeah. Spacek was an adult when she played Carrie, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but she's playing a 16-year-old girl. <laughs> I have to do everything for these lazy f***s, by the way. I, 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 dude, they're f***ing... By the way, <coughs> chat, you have to hear this, right? I'm trying to organize them to, like, set up a recording, and everyone's got to f***ing... Oh, I can't do that. I got to do that. I got to do that. I'm like, bro, I, I f***ing put in... 
I, I clocked my hours last week. I put. I 11, have this from now on. You don't have to worry I about this. I put in eleven hours at least a week in the Lao Cow Live, and these guys put in fucking two hours, and they can't. I'm over here right now. It. Right now, I'm talking to the emote guy to try to get emotes for the live stream I'm currently doing. No, 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 no. hold on. I'm doing work too. Hold I'm on. doing work too. He connected me with the emu emote guy, right, to get emotes for you <laughs> or whatever the fuck they are. Guy. And and he <laughs> let fifteen days go by without a message 15 days it's um, the holidays some of us do shit, team another thing when we go to vegas in february all right for wings 1v1 we're all going there and i'm gonna yeah. make you all get some beard dye all three of you are getting beard dye done and then we're gonna have like that scene from the hangover where they're all walking through <laughs> vegas and their fucking suits and shit <laughs> all right guys i think we're gonna Will leave you it go ahead Spend your hard-earned Christmas money on the local podcast to Dang. send my ass to Vegas. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for coming out.